Hello everybody. Uh, in this video, we will create a neural network to classify our mushroom as edible or poisonous. So this is the data set I have downloaded from Kaggle. So uh, let's start working on this. So uh, to begin, we're going to import a couple of libraries. That's going to be vital. So let's do that. So first thing we need is pandas import pandas as pd uh, so pandas is a data science package which we will use it to manipulate our data and then we need numpies uh, and the numpy will help us manipulate arrays and then uh, we will need seaborn uh, which we will uh, use at the end to visualize the data and the next thing we will need is uh, from TensorFlow, we will be using Keras, right? So let's import from TensorFlow. Import Keras. So Keras has the library to uh, uh, do the neural network trainings. So let's do this. So once this thing is imported, uh, we will start uploading our data. So these are, uh, uh, I'm using right now Zupyter Notebook. Uh, it has uh, all the packages that's installed. So if you don't want to use Jupyter Notebook, I would highly recommend using Google's Colab, uh, which has all the packages built into it. So uh, you don't need to install. So all of these comes as pre-installed in Google Colab. It's on the back end, their back end. Okay, so let's uh, look at our data frame. So let's create a data frame. So we, to create a data frame, so data frame is basically Excel, uh, like glorified Excel. So we will use Panda. So uh, Panda has this read CSV functions. So if I click tab, it'll show all the functions available. So read CSV. And then I'm gonna, uh, so as I type mush uh, and hit tab, it shows you the file name. The file name is being shown here because I put my mushroom CSV file, if you notice here, in the same folder as the Python notebook. If it's not there, you can uh, just add the direct pathway, a path name for your uh, Mac computer or Windows computer, whatever you are using. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much what we did. So all we did was we used the read CSV functions from pandas because we imported pandas as PD. Okay, so let's look at our data frame. So if you notice here, data frame dot head, it's gonna show you the five uh, rows of your data frame. So that's basically Excel sheet. So CSP file is comma separated file. So it's kind of glorified Excel sheet. That's how uh, you can easy way to put it that way. So uh, right here. So you notice the class. So we got P E so it's P probably stands for poisonous E stands for probably edible uh, for this data frame and then all of those uh, data here so I have no idea what some of this uh, notation means but we don't need to understand computer doesn't need to understand all we have to do is convert this letter so obviously computer can't read letters when we are designing algorithms so we have to convert all of these letters into names but before doing that let's look at what exactly our data types are so let's do data frame dot info so this would gives a detail of every column what is the type of data so you notice we have 8124 entries this is something i always like to check before every uh project is do we have any null values so you notice we have total 8124 and every column has 8124 none null values okay so uh we have full the data sets is complete there is nothing uh um uh, nothing fancy in there so this data set is probably somebody made up data sets uh, i'm not sure about the data sets but it's complete so that's good and you notice everything every data types are object type they are not int or float so these are object types so first we're going to convert all those uh, another way you can check is if you don't have any null values is data frame is null dot sum 
So it's going to go through every cell and ask, is it null? Is it null? Is it null? And then sum them. And you notice all the sum here is turning out to be zero. So you can uh, see what data frame is null is doing. So it's looking at the first row, first column and asking, is it null? The answer is false. So it's doing over everything. Now, if you add them, so by adding some functions, it's going to give how many null values we have. So you notice here, if we had any null values, it, there should be a number, either one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So it looks good, data looks good. Uh, let's look at here, uh, how many poisonous and uh, edible type of mushrooms we have here. Uh, so let's see here, data frame. Uh, so if you want to access the column, this is class, because we want to look the class column. And then something we can do call value counts. So value counts will gives us how many data types we got. So it's, it's only two types of data, edible and poisonous. And it's kind of evenly distributed, 4,200 and 3,900. So this looks pretty good. We have only two types. Okay, so uh, this is where now we're gonna do some pre-processing. So like I said, we cannot read the alphabet. So let's do uh, convert this uh alphabets into some type of number so let's do label encoding so maybe uh let me explain so we got class type p and e so let's do a label encoder from scikit-learn uh where we can convert p into some sort of number maybe we can convert p into one e into zero and if we have more type of label maybe here um let's say n y w g so let's look at here cap color let's see how many different types of uh, data we have in cap color so uh, let's see here d f cap color dot value counts uh, so that's gonna give us all the different types of label we have so you notice these are the different types Okay, so in this case, we can add a label, uh, maybe, uh, so usually the uh, algorithms add alphabetically. So it looks like the B is the first one. So we can add B as zero, C as one, after C, E as two, G as three, and so on. So it'll do automatically. So let's do that. So from preprocessing import, label encoder so it will import so let's create the instant of let's call this le equals to label encoder okay so we are uh instant dang it this is a difficult word to pronounce so uh yeah so we create an instance of this label encoder and then we're gonna convert each column one after another okay so basically we're going to create a for loop here. So let's say for columns in data frame dot columns. So what uh, maybe I will show you if you click data frame dot columns, it will show you all the columns name. Okay. So let's create a, a for loop here. So for for columns in data frame dot columns so what we are trying to do here is we are gonna go column after column and then replace the column so data frame column we're gonna replace the column with uh, uh, with the new label so it's gonna be le dot fit transform so it's gonna fit for every column and transform those alphabets into number and the data type would be data frame uh, column so for every column this is what we're gonna do okay uh, so let's run it so looking good now at this point if you let's print again data frame dot head so when you do head it will show you the first five rows like I said okay now you see all of the numbers are changes so let's look at here class so uh, before our class P, 
uh, and E. We got two types, right? Uh, so P was changed to one, E was changed to zero. So you notice here P was changed to one, E was changed to zero. Like I said, it's gonna go alphabetical. Uh, same goes with cap sip. So we got five, zero, five, five. Uh, so you notice here X was labeled as five, B was labeled as zero, and X was labeled as five. So it's converted into number. Now from here, we could have done uh, scaling and everything. This is a simple classification problem. So once we get this number out, uh, I think our project, uh, the, the sequential model will be able to classify this in no times. Okay, so let's split our data sets into X and Y category. So X would be every properties of the mushroom that we have here, everything's where things are. Uh, sometimes uh, habitat populations can correlate it to poisonous or edible. And then our class would be Y variable, okay? So, so X would be, let's create the X data frame. So X would be data frame dot drop. Uh, so columns equals to class. So basically what we did was we dropped the column, class column, and everything else would be part of our X variable. And the Y variable is going to be basically data frame, the class column. Okay. Uh, good. So if you want, you can check it out. X dot head. Uh, let's look at the first three rows. So you see the class column is gone and you can check the y dot head as well. It's showing the first few rows, okay? Uh, next thing, let's split our data sets uh, into x and uh, y variables. So, uh, oh, we did it already. So let's uh, do the next thing where we're gonna split our data sets into training sets and uh, testing sets, right? Mm. So we're gonna split our data sets using scikit-learn so from sklearn start model selection so this is where we have our splitting uh, uh algorithm is there splitting function is there uh sklearn dot model selections import train test split okay so let's split our data let's name this let's call it x train x test y train y test make sure you type it in the exact sequence otherwise it's gonna be difference so train test split so our data that we want to split is going to be we will have to provide x then y uh what is our testing size let's make it 25 percent of the data 0 0.25 and then uh let's do soft all equals to true and then random state uh we don't need to provide i will provide because then we can uh, if you want to optimize some parameters, then you can test around the same random state. All right, so uh, our stuff is ready. You can uh, check the shape of it, xtrain.shape. So this is uh, taking and converting into a NumPy arrays, okay, arrays. You can check the shape. It has 6,993 and 22, uh, 22 columns. So that's pretty much what we have here. 22 columns. Okay, um, let's jump on to uh, Y train. So this is where uh, the Y variables were, it's it were one, zero, zero. So we, we have to uh, convert into a binary matrix, um, which is called one heart encoding. So let me explain. Uh, let's print Y train. Let's print our Y train uh, and let's print the first five rows. And uh, what I'm going to do is convert this Y train. I'll one heart encode this uh, using Keras. Keras.utils to categorical. And I'm going to convert. I'm just doing only for uh, Y train because testing, we, we don't need to do it. And then num classes. How many classes we have? Two, poisonous and edible. Okay, uh, so that's it. And I'm gonna reprint before and after for your clarifications. Print Y train five. And you see here, uh, it converted one into zero and one. So first column stands for zero, second column stands for one. So when these three, 
the number is zero, it is giving a positive value here in this column and a null value or zero on this column. When our value is one, it's, it's giving zero for the first column and one for the second column. So it's took the one and converted into zero one. Our num classes were two, so that's why it created two column. If our num classes were 10, it will create 10 columns and assign where exactly the value is, all right? Okay, so we printed out before and afters. I think we are ready uh, to uh, train our data. Uh, let's import some of the pack uh, functions that we need uh, from Keras. So, um, so from Keras.models, uh, we'll be using a basic sequential model. Uh, and from Keras.layers, uh, let's import uh, dense uh, dropout. These are the only two things we can use it. You can use uh, batch normalizations, but this is a very simple, this is very beginner's level tutorial. So these two would be able to do our job pretty efficiently. Okay, uh, so let's create model. Let's create the model. So model equals to sequential and let's add a bunch of layers to it. So model.add. So first layer we're gonna add is dense layer and let's add 32 units to it. You can add anything you want. 32, 64, 128. Again, this doesn't have to be 32. You can do 50 units as well. And then uh, provide the activation functions. We will use ReLU. And then uh, uh, we need to provide input shape. So input shape is gonna be how many columns we had in our data set. So if you notice here, our extra in dot shape has 22 uh, type of categories, categorical data. So this is what it will be training on. So that shape has to be provided. So 22 dash. Uh, so the other portions, if we had multi-dimensional data sets, we would have add uh, more there. So here it's kind of simple. So instead of writing 22, uh, you can uh, access that 22, that number uh, by typing this out, xtrain.shape. And this is the second index, right? Or from the, um, it will be the last index if you are looking at from the right side, or it will be the zero and index number one would be this one. Okay, so you can do something like this x train dot shape uh, you can do one so if you type this this is basically accessing the number 22 it's going to shape of the x train dot shape and then access the second index and second index is written as one remember first index is zero second index is one third index is two or if you're not sure, you can always put minus one there. So it's gonna tell us, it's gonna access the last index. So in this case, our last index is 22 anyway. So either one is fine. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much what we did here. You can, 20, if, you, if it sounds confusing, you can put 22 there as well. Okay, so uh, let's add uh, another layer to it and other dense layers and we can keep it 32 as well units equals to 32 activations functions is going to be ReLU. this time we don't need to provide shape anymore because it's going to connect to the previous layer uh, we can add uh, another uh, we can add a dropout layer um, uh, drop out, let's say, uh, what percentage of data you want to drop. Let's say we want to drop out 30%. You can drop out 50% if you want. Uh, we want to drop out 50% of the data sets from there randomly. Uh, if you want, you can add another dense layer, but that's unnecessary. But feel free to add, keep adding. It's, since this is a very uh, small... And uh, we can add another dropout here, model.add. Okay, I'm doing this, this this number is excessive, but I guess this is just for the sake of it. Uh, 
we are adding let's see if the if the data set does not look good we can remove it like i have tested this before if i have only this much it worked just fine if you want you can delete these two i haven't tested what would happen if i add these two so let's see and the final one let's this will be our final layer model.add uh, this will be tens and uh, we gonna do uh, units how many units do you want and our output remember our output could be two poisonous or edible so that's two and activation function is going to be softmax so that's going to be our activation functions okay this seems okay everything's look okay so let's compile our model uh, model.compile uh, we gotta use optimizer so our optimizer we're gonna use default atom de adam adam's default learning rate and then uh, our loss function is gonna be uh categorical cross entropy you can use binary cross entropy as well uh, because our output is only two uh because we out we had only two outputs so we could have used binary uh as well and then uh, another last thing we need is metrics how would we evaluate our model um, when it's training uh, we're gonna be using our accuracy oh do the accuracy score okay then uh, let's summarize our model and it doesn't have too many parameters only 2914 so it's not gonna take that long to train all right, so we are ready to train our model, model.fit, and let's pass our training set, x train, y train, uh, batch size, let's do 500 at a time, and uh, 500 samples is gonna pass. Number of epochs, uh, how many epochs would you like to pass through? Um, uh, epochs, let's say uh, we wanna pass i will say let's just pass 50. Uh, i think i've tested 100 200 let's just do 100. it doesn't i think 50 would have been fine let's find out and then uh, validation split uh, this is something you can do when your data set is large 20 percent but we are already dealing with small number of data so maybe i should not do uh, let's see let's put it in there 20 percent okay uh I think, oh, last thing, uh, verbose equals to two. Oh, this is not important. Uh, it's just gonna show all the outputs as we as it's running. Um, okay, so you can see by adding verbose equals to two, it's gonna show all the loss, accuracy, and all those numbers. Okay, so we are done. See, it didn't take that long. So we are 99% accuracy and uh, validation accuracy 99 and 1%. Oh, I think it's probably overtrained. So let's see where exactly it's hitting that 99% mark for validations. I think we could have easily be done. <laughs> okay, I did overtrain. I think we could have easily stopped at 910. This probably because I have added a couple of extra layer and i increase the dropout to 50 percent. i think last time i tested was around 20 percent okay um it seems working pretty fine definitely overfit we could have easily stopped around uh, 10 because you see our uh not not 10 uh let's see i think we could have easily keep improving we could have easily stopped around uh 30 or 50 that's where it's kind of 90 reaching to the 95 94 oh well okay so let's try to look at here predictions so predictions is gonna be model dot predict and let's we're gonna predict on the x test and then let's let's print predictions the first five of them Okay, so let's print first five predictions. So you see, it's giving us output in a uh, two by two matrix, not two by two. It's a matrix. It's giving output with matrix with two columns. Uh, so here we got two 
numbers. 9.9 .9 into 10 to the power negative 1 and 7.1 into 10 to the power negative 6. So we have to convert this into which column is max maximum number. So it's so we can do that by uh, by numpy argmax. So it's gonna give the locations of the max number. Uh, so we wanna do the argmax on the predictions, whatever our prediction was before. And then we're gonna find out the maximum locations on our last axis. Axis equals to negative nine. So if you do print prediction the first five, so let's do it. Let's do print predictions. Okay, so it took the maximum position. So between these two, the maximum was first column. So it gives that zero. Here, the maximum position was the second column. So it gives one. So that's what it did. So it's basically converted this, uh, into a one-dimensional arrays, two-dimensional arrays to one-dimensional arrays. All right, so uh, we are ready. Uh, let's uh, measure the accuracy. So uh, let's do from scikit-learn uh, dot matrix. Uh, let's import accuracy scores, and I like to see the confusion matrix as well. And uh, let's see, AC score equals to accuracy score. And when you do this, uh, you gotta provide the actual value first and then the prediction value. And print AC score. All right, so we 99% uh, and then confusion matrix. So let's call it confusion matrix is uh, confusion matrix and then Y has predictions. And let's print it out. All right, so uh, this is our confusion matrix. Let's make it a little bit better. Better. So let's do. Um, let's print it out in uh, Seabones. So let's call it ax equals to sns dot heat map. And we're gonna on heat map. We're gonna be using our confusion matrix as data sets. And uh, Let's annotate our data sets, format equals to D. And CMAP, let's use greens or maybe reds. It doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, let's see. So you see uh, it. Uh, the bottom one is predictions. This one is actual, so it predicted zero. Actual turns out to be zero, uh, 1057 times, uh, and then uh, only seven times it predicted zero, but it turns out one. Okay, so uh, let's add a few things. Let's add instead of zero and one, uh, zero and one here, uh, let's add the label. So, you know, uh, as we go back, so E and P, those are the two labels. So E was alphabetically first, so E was zero. E is edible, P probably poisonous. So let's zero and one. So let's create label column here. So label equals to create a list. E is edible. That's zero, position zero. And uh, we can have poisonous. Uh, hopefully my spelling is correct, poisonous. And uh, let's add a few things here. X tick labels equals to label. Y tick labels equals to label as well. All right. So you see we have our, so it predicted 1057 times edible. And uh, here it turns out to be edible 967 times. Oh, we didn't do any mistakes. I guess we can rely on our, uh, I guess since this is a made up data, that's why it's probably that accurate. I'm not sure the Kaggle who made this data. If you know, uh, is it real data or fake data? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so uh, that seems pretty good. Uh, okay, next thing I wanna add is a title. So uh, ax dot set title. Uh, let's call this uh, 
confusion matrix for uh, mushroom data shares. And AX dot set X label, uh, X title, wait, X label. And uh, let's X level is predictions. Uh, AX dot set Y label uh, is actual. All right, so this looks pretty good. Uh, this poison predictions and actual kind of matches with this edible and poisonous font size. So maybe we want to change the font size a little bit. Uh, font size equals to, let's put 14. Font size equals to 14. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, uh, so yeah, this data sets looks good. So if you know, uh, I will post both of the data sets and this, this Python notebook in my uh, GitHub page. Uh, yeah, that's all I had to say for this video. Stay tuned.